Joining me now, Adam Goodman, Vince Colonnese, uh, Jillian Melcher, and Pete Hegseth. Uh, Vince, let me start with you. Uh, you know, of course, uh, the narrative now is uh, Trump maybe have trumped uh, Rubio once again. Certainly, Rubio came into today with all the all the uh, momentum, and then the Christie uh, uh, endorsement. Rubio drank his coffee before that debate last night. He he was totally prepared in terms of coming out and not getting caught flat-footed the way he did in front of Governor Christie. And now he's on stage, and he sort of they sort of built the expectations game up, by the way, ahead of the debate. They were sort of signaling that they were only going to spend all their time attacking Cruz, meaning Rubio's team. But it turns out Donald Trump was not prepared for these haymakers to be coming next to him. And I won't say that Donald Trump failed at this debate. He certainly didn't. I think he absolutely kept his head above water. I think a lot of Trump supporters watched that debate and thought, that's the guy we know and love. But, boy, was it a Cuban Missile Crisis for Trump with Cruz and Rubio both just coming at him like crazy last night. Well, there's no doubt about that. But then we came into uh, this morning, Adam, and, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, Trump says, I've got this uh, announcement. I mean, we talk, uh, you talk about earned media coverage. He was everywhere. It was over an hour long. And, of course, it was, it was all about Chris Christie uh, jumping on board. And the narrative now is Trump is luring the establishment. And a lot of people think this is a major deal, a major coup. There's no question it is, uh, Charles, because what we're seeing this year is a muscular election. This is an election which is favoring the extroverts over the introverts, those that have attitude over all the policy answers and substance. And Christie and uh, Trump really do align that way. They both can bring it. They both are unafraid to, to put things on the, on the line. Uh, I think we have the beginning of maybe a move in, you might say, the more establishment quarters to start quietly. Uh, and slowly, quietly, but surely moving in the direction of Donald Trump. And I disagree with the, the first comment. I thought Donald Trump won the debate last night. I think he dominated the debate last night because it wasn't about the substance and the policy answers. It was simply about attitude. And he is communicating with an us versus them message that is resonating, I believe, across America. You know, a lot of people will argue who won, but I think everyone thinks it was a, probably the best performance ever for Rubio. And back to this Christie thing, it's really odd because obviously Christie was running for the White House, and there are at least nine times that he's gone after Donald Trump saying he's not qualified, including one back in August of last year. I want to take a listen to what he had to say about Donald Trump back then. Donald's a great guy and a good person, but I just don't think he's suited to be president of the United States. Why? Um, I don't think his temperament is suited for that, and I don't think his experience is. Showtime is over, everybody. We are not electing an entertainer-in-chief. Showmanship is fun, but it's not the kind of leadership that will truly change America. You know, Pete uh, and Jillian, I, I did find it a little interesting. I thought, to be quite frank with you, that that uh, Christie was working up to this for a while. I even thought his hit on Rubio was in part to maybe position himself for a VP slot or an AG slot. But then again, I'm a, I'm a pretty cynical person. <laughs> but having but having said that, though, how surprised are you? And do you what do you think? It, uh, how does it impact the race here? I was surprised when I first saw it. I mean, the last 24 hours have indeed been dizzying. Uh, but this is a this is a huge get. No doubt for Donald Trump. And Chris Christie brings that swagger, that attitude alongside it. And, you know, candidates say a lot of things during campaigns. Of course, Chris Christie was going to try to discredit Donald Trump. But in the last part of his campaign, he started to dial back criticism of Donald Trump. Why? Uh, I, think, I think because maybe this was in the making or this was something on the horizon. He maybe saw the writing on the wall. Uh, but it, it certainly puts a, a, a kink in the gears of what many thought was a... Uh, a 24-hour comeback by Rubio, which isn't over. I mean, he had a very strong debate, an incredibly strong debate, and I think still a lot of momentum because he's found where to hit Trump. But Trump hit back today with a powerful endorsement. A lot of people are paying attention. And, uh, and, and after Trump's uh, you know, in, uh, announcement with Chris Christie, Jillian, uh, Rubio got back on the air. By the way, I don't think he's used to the so-called earned air time. Uh, he was actually trying to rush to another appearance, and people are like, uh, they're, they're, everybody's out. covering you. What are you doing, my man? Uh, but he actually did take it to Donald Trump more today. And, uh, you know, he, 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 yeah, he said Donald Trump was sweating. It was, it, it was pretty interesting. And it feels like after the day, I don't know where the hell Ted Cruz was, but it really feels like it was uh, all about Donald Trump and Marco Rubio. It's in the gutter. And I think what Rubio is saying is evidence of how deleterious of an effect uh, you know, Trump has had on American politics. With Chris Christie, I will say that I vacillate between absolute disgust and pity. I think he's sold his soul for Donald Trump's word, and as we know, that's worth than, worth less than 30 silvers. Wow. I, I well, am disgusted. A, 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 I'm I'm Adam, that's, that's some strong stuff. I will say, I think Rubio did take off those high heel shoes and put on some fighting sneakers today. <laughs> uh, but but what, what, do, what do you make of it all? Where do we go from here? Because you got to believe this is going to be just only become more intense as we head into Tuesday. 
This election is about Americans looking for a leader who will bring it. And even though Chris Christie didn't uh, prevail in the in the primary process, he if, if nothing else, he could bring it. And I think those two really belong together. I and completely I think, disagree uh, even, with you. He's somebody even, that did not well, bring it in said, 2012, what, and I'm disappointed about I, that. And I, he's somebody I, who's now taking the cowardly perspective and endorsing Donald Trump. Why would you say it's cowardly? I, I, why is it cowardly? I think it's opportunist. I think that this is a point where you take a stand if conservatism means something to you. And he's not taking this a is stand. Not he's a, doing what's Charles. politically he's, opportune. And let, all right, go to Adam. Charles. Adam. Charles, this is this election is not right now is not about partisanship. It's not about party, and it's not about ideology. It's about who can bring it at a time when America needs leadership. That is why Chris Christie, I think, united uh, today with Trump. That is why Trump is doing so well. You can even argue on the other side of the fence that Bernie Sanders is hitting with a with a totally different remedy. Is hitting a lot of the same kinds of notes. America is tired of government that doesn't work, and I right. think Trump is struck something, and Christie well, and is I, right there with Chris, him. Chris Christie. Chris Christie He's never been a movement conservative, so this is not about conservatism for Chris Christie. This I do, I do think it was an opportune moment for him. Uh, but in, I think you talk about bringing it. I think a lot of conservatives, a lot of Republicans, looked at both Rubio and Cruz last night and said, "Finally, people brought it at Trump in at his own game and said, you know what? What about your Trump University? What about uh, your taxes? What about all the things that you know have been mentioned here or there?" But a lot of these candidates have looked at the, the carcasses, frankly, of of uh, Jeb Bush and others who tried to attack him and didn't didn't do so successfully. They tried to attack on a line of conservatism. This election is not about conservatism. They want to see strength. It should be, but it isn't. Uh, they want to see strength, and I think that's what Rubio and Cruz did you last know, night, and, why it could be effective. And Vince, I, I think that's the point. Uh, you know, Donald Trump uh, magnificent at zeroing in on people's weaknesses early on, whether it was Jeb being uh, without energy uh, and other aspects, you know, Ted Cruz not having anyone in the Senate to support him. Uh, and maybe yeah. this is it. Maybe they continue to go after Trump where it hurts him most with the, the notion that maybe he's not worth $9 billion, the notion that maybe, hey, he's got, he's got some issues coming up. So I think the university thing sticks around. I think until he files the his taxes, thing that does. gets higher and higher, too. Yep. What do you think, Vince? I do think I think that they're going to try and, and undermine him. I think ultimately, though, every candidate up to and including last night in the debate have all misunderstood and the media generally have all misunderstood Donald Trump's appeal. Donald Trump's appeal is wrapped up in a rebellion by the American people about the way they feel they've had to be self-censoring for so long for fear that they would lose their livelihoods if they spoke up about their opinions. And they're seeing a guy who's got wild opinions, some of which they don't agree with, but they see him not being punished for them. They see him moving ahead and succeeding, and that is infectious. And that result has been very, very compelling to a lot of people in the American public, and it has little to do with policy. I think, I think you're right, but the problem is he not only talks the talk, he walks the walk, and his, his record is incredibly problematic. What do you mean, his, his own personal record? Or, yeah, I mean, or, if you're looking at Trump University, if you're looking at his illegal Polish labor, if you're looking at you know him repeatedly lying to the American public, if you're looking at his history of racism. And, well, if you're looking uh, at his hold, hold on one second. I mean, some of these things, I mean, I don't know about the racism part, but I will tell you, <laughs> some of these things, uh, whether it's the, the, the Polish workers, for instance, they're going to say, well, that was 38 years ago. mar a uh, you know, I think he kind of explained that. I think the thing that we've all kind of hit on it is that his core, Donald Trump's core supporters aren't going anywhere. Uh, and, and in the meantime, others continue to flock. I mean, you know, it's sort of it's gaining its own momentum, if you will. And I don't know if any of that's going to stop this. Stop well, it, I Pete. think part of what Rubio was trying to do was prevent any, any higher of a ceiling for Donald Trump. He wanted to make sure that people do leave Cruz or they did leave Kasich or they did leave somebody that they're coming to him. But I, I think it, at some level, an electability argument is going to, I think, matter a little bit. It was interesting to see Chris Christie say that he thinks the folks that the Clintons fear the most is Donald Trump. I, I find that a little hard to believe because they want someone if they they're so indicted themselves that uh, you run up against Donald Trump and it, it's a mud it's a mud match. Uh, Adam, uh, it's a, that's a that's a precarious claim. Adam, who do you think? Uh, we, now we're talking general election. Uh, you know, early on uh, the conventional wisdom was that perhaps it was Marco Rubio. Who do you think general election right now? Because that's one of the last ditch appeals also. Well, we can predict what the campaign would be like if Marco squared off against Hillary, if Ted Cruz squared off against Hillary. Or if any of them screwed up, uh, squared off against Hillary, except for Donald Trump. And I'll tell you why this is doable. I'll tell you why Donald Trump is actually a candidate who can win. He's taken it to the system. He's an outsider who has a message. And people finally have someone they can believe in that will advance their voice and their interests that aren't represented by the, by the elites, that aren't represented by those that, that seem to have it all together in the system. I think that's a whirling dervish that heaven knows what, where it ends up 
except Hillary Clinton and her team will have a devil of a time trying to figure out how to engage, properly engage and defeat a guy like this. All right, guys.